MCPs can give your AI coding agent superpowers, but here's the truth. Most MCP servers are actually useless and can confuse your coding process. I've tested out all of the most popular MCPs, so you don't have to. And in this video, I will provide you my top five MCPs that will help you to automate your workflows, debug more efficient, and develop your apps faster. We go over what problem each MCP solves, how to install it in your project, and run hands-on examples on how to use them. So the first MCP server is the ref MCP. The problem it solves is that LLMs are trained on data that is cut off at some point in the past. And when you work with APIs or libraries, your LLM usually has outdated data on them. And what ref does is it has access to the documentation of thousands of tools and libraries that you can connect. Whenever we want to integrate a new API or a new library, we can talk to the server and it will fetch us the latest documentation requirements, bug reports of these tools, summarize it to a plan, how we can implement it for our specific need, and then brings that latest knowledge back to our coding agent. Now, a huge advantage of the ref MCP compared to other popular MCPs like Context 7 is that, for example, Context 7 also has access to all these documents. But what Context 7 does is it takes all the documentation and fully brings that back to your coding agent with even some irrelevant information. And this just clutters up the context window. But RefMCP is really context optimized. So to install the RefMCP, you need an account with them. You get up to 200 of these MCP server calls per month for free. And then it's just $9 a month if you really go above that. But in my opinion, that's more than worth it. And even with these 200 calls, you get already a lot of value. So for cloud code, we can simply copy this command and go back into our project. And then we can simply open up the terminal and paste the command here. Now this already includes your API key for RefMCP. If you just want to install the RefMCP for your project, you can run this command, but I don't want to install the RefMCP for every single project. I wanna install it on the user level. So all my projects I work on have access to this RefMCP. And so in order to do that, we can customize this command by just going behind the transport HTTP and then typing dash S for scope and then user. So I'm gonna run this command and we already see the MCP server got successfully added. And whenever you add a new MCP, you also need to restart Cloud Code. So I'm gonna close Cloud Code and start it up again. And if I now type slash MCP, we see that the ref MCP got connected. And if I click into it, I see we have these tools for access. So let's try it out. I'm switching to the plan mode in Cloud Code over here and say something like, I want to integrate Stripe into my app, fetch the latest Stripe documentation through the ref MCP and come up with a plan to integrate. Now this is a very shitty prompt for sure, but it will be enough for this demo. So we already see it wants to call the ref MCP and it now goes ahead into the GitHub repo of Stripe and fetches all of the knowledge that we need. I'm gonna allow ref MCP for all further calls. And once it is finished, it feeds all the latest documentation of Stripe that is relevant for our plan over here into Cloud Code. And based on that, Cloud has the latest knowledge to come up and implement this feature. Now the second MCP server is actually my favorite MCP servers of all time, and that is the Superbase MCP. If you work with Superbase in any form or shape, this one is for sure a must. And when we install this MCP, I will show you the list of tools and it's just insane. It can literally do everything inside of your Superbase account from setting up user authentication flows, creating new tables and fields in your database, updating RLS policies, deploying edge functions, or accessing all the logs for debugging. And this MCP is so important to give your coding agent the full understanding of your project. If Cloud Code is running in your project, it already has access to all the front end, but with the Superbase MCP, it can also understand the back end in its completion and understand all the function and really has this full picture of your project. Superbase has a great documentation on how to install the MCP. I'm gonna install it here for Cloud Code on macOS. We simply can copy this JSON over here come back to our project and then add a new file if you don't already have this one and call it .mcp.json. Paste this command over here. Now in that documentation, they have the JSON over here with the read only flag, but I also want to give Cloud Code the ability to make edits and changes to this, my super base. So I'm just simply gonna remove this read only line over here. And then there's two variables that we need to replace, the product ref and the personal access token. So for the product ref, we simply need to open up our 
project in Superbase and then go to this URL and copy the path behind project slash the string over here and then just replace the project ref and the personal access token you find this into your account preferences access tokens generate new token call it as you want for example Claude expires in I never let it expire generate a token and then copy this token and bring it back into this JSON over here I'm going to restart Claude code and I'm running this in a new project. If I now run slash MCP, we also see that the ref MCP is over here because we installed it on a global user level, but we also see our new Superbase MCP. If we view the tools, the amount here is insane. We have 19 tools, so let's test it out. I'm gonna say list out all tables I have in Superbase and already knows it needs to call the Superbase MCP. The tool is called list tables and I'm now presented with all the tables. Let's also make an edit. So I want to create a new table YouTube with the following fields, video, title, date, views, likes, comments. And then I also want to migrate it to the Superbase through MCP. So Cloud Code is finished and has successfully created the table. Let's go back and view this in our Superbase project. In the table editor, I see that the new YouTube table has been created and we didn't even tell it what types the different fields are. For example, video is a text, title is a text, but by itself, it already knows views is probably gonna be a number, likes is a number. Also, the comments are gonna be a number and it always adds these standard fields, created at, updated at. So just by a prompt that took me 10 seconds, it did all the heavy lifting for me and I have this perfect table with all the different types set up over here. MCP number three is the browser MCP. The problem that it solves is that typically just by looking at the code, it is sometimes hard to get the whole flow. It oftentimes misses any bugs. So the typical coding flow looks like you develop a feature, you open up a local host, you test it out yourself, you experience a bug, then you copy all the console logs and server logs back into cloud code and tell it to fix this bug. And then you have this debugging loop over here with your coding agent. Now, what the browser MCP does is it gives actual vision to your coding agent. So it lets it access your running localhost app. And if you give your coding agent this MCP, it is going to go ahead and can click through your whole app. So it will see your perspective. It can fill out any forms, click buttons, test basically out the whole workflow. And it also has access to all the console logs. So no more copying back and forth of all the errors you're experiencing. A very popular MCP that does kind of the same as the Playwright MCP. But what this one does is it spins up a new browser. So it doesn't have access if you're already, already logged in with a user in your local host. It doesn't have access to all the cookies, the locked in user data. The browser MCP really lets you connect your running local host app and not having it spin up in a different browser. So to install the browser MCP, you need two things. The first of that is a Chrome extension to enable it to connect to a specific browser tab. And the second one is again, a JSON command. So if we want to set this up for cloud code, we see the JSON down here again, and I'm back in a new product over here. So I have to add the dot MCP dot JSON again, and then simply paste this command. Gonna restart cloud code. And I'm inside of the product that we developed in my last video, which is this habit tracker over here. So to give the browser MCP access, we just need to open up the extension and connect it to your session. And I'm gonna prompt an example, access our app through the browser MCP, test out the emoji picker and suggest improvements. So it already has identified our app is running on localhost and I'm gonna give it access to it. Let's view this, how it looks in the browser. It now performs a click on it. I'm not doing anything. It wants to take a screenshot of the current state to proceed with the testing. And after the run, it now went ahead and suggests us a couple of improvements that if we read through them, they're really from the user perspective. So the user experience, for example, adding different hover states, improving the search functionality, navigating through the emojis, through the keyboard. And all of that are very useful changes that it only gets because it's now thinking from the user perspective. Now, MCP number four is an MCP that just got recently released, but I already love it. And that's the ChatCN MCP. If you are a true live caller, you already know about ChatCN. It is a library of beautiful components that we can just use to build our app. But if you already try to install some of the components, you know, it can be a headache to making them actually work. Just pasting the command to install it oftentimes not works. 
and you need to provide the whole documentation. But even then, it oftentimes fails to integrate it properly into your app. The Shetzi and MCP solve that by fetching all the commands, but also the documentation on how to properly implement that into your application. But that is not even my favorite part. What the MCP also allows you to do is to work with registries that are based on ShedCN. Now, just working with the standard ShedCN library makes your app kind of look like every other app out there. But there's a lot of other registries that are built on top of ShedCN that you can also use with these MCP. My personal favorite ones are the Origin UI. These are just absolute beautiful components that I really like to use. If I want to work with more special effects or special components, the Eternity UI is great. And I also combine it with the Magic UI that is also a library of very beautiful special components. So to install the MCP, we can come to the documentation and simply copy this command, bring it to our terminal and let's run it. But to work with custom registries, we also need to create a components.json where we list all registries. So let's go ahead and add a new file, call it components.json. And below this video, you'll find my JSON command over here with all my favorite registries. We have the origin URI, Eternity URI, Magic URI, and we always need to list them like this with the name of the component as variable over here. So let's find us a component that we could integrate in our app. And I already know inside of the Magic UI, there's this little confetti over here, like this. And I wanna integrate it over here whenever someone checks off a habit that we have this confetti effect over here. So in the documentation, I will simply copy the name of the component, which is very obvious. Coming back to Cloud Code, which I of course have restarted because we have installed a new MCP and say, integrate the confetti from Magic UI. Whenever someone marks a habit today as done, use the chat CN MCP for the integration. And then allow the edits and let's run it. So first goes ahead and searches our app to understand where we want to integrate this. And then it goes ahead to the chat CN MCP to search in the registry for Magic UI. It finds the confetti effect that we want to implement. All right, so implementation is completed. Let's go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna toggle this one. Yes, we have our confetti effect over here and all of that with just a single shot prompt. Now, before we come to the last MCP, if you also have an idea for your app that you want to build with AI, go ahead and check out my Builders Club course and community where I will provide you all the knowledge and support you need to get your app from zero, from your idea to finished launch. So I would love to see you there. So pitch completed, let's go back to MCPs. MCP number five is the Firecrawl MCP. Now Firecrawl is a very popular tool that can basically scrape any website. You can either scrape single websites or even multiple websites and summarize all of that together. There's already this built-in web search function in Cloud Code, but what it does is it clutters up first all of the contacts window with going through all the search results and then providing the full scraped web page into your LLM. But Firecrawl does a great job in just summarizing and extracting the most relevant information you need to perform the tasks. Firecrawl can also bypass any blockers or server rendering, which makes it a great tool for me to either research documentation, that's for example, not in the Rev MCP, or also scrape other competitor apps to get inspiration or yeah, collect any information that could be relevant for our building process. So in the documentation, we find the command for running it inside of Cloud Code. I'm simply gonna copy it over here and then paste it in our terminal. Now for Firecrawl, you of course need an API key. So I'm gonna replace this part over here, head back to Firecrawl in my dashboard, and I'm gonna create a new API key over here, example, Cloud Code. And let's bring this one back to our app and run the command. So let's restart Cloud and give it an example. Use the Firecrawl MCP to scan multiple SaaS landing pages for habit trackers and collect a list of features and testimonials highlighting what users found most useful so we plan which features to integrate next. Let's run it. So we see down here how the Firecrawl MCP is going ahead and scraping multiple competitor apps and finding us the testimonials and feature lists. 
So it finished conducting the research and so just we implement the following features. So must-haves, we should have streak tracking with flexible schedule, not just daily, which I really like. Visual charts, quick one-tap entry. We can also improve on that, smart reminders, and then even suggesting some differentiators, which for a habit tracker, there's already thousands out there. So I like that it's coming up with different suggestions down here. So these were my top MCPs that I absolutely love. Let me know down in the comments, which MCPs are you using? Are there some hidden gems maybe? And I would love to do a part two of the favorite community MCPs. Go ahead and subscribe if you don't want to miss that. And if you want to find out if Cloud Code is still the best AI coding agent, or if there's another champ, go ahead and check out my last video. So thank you for watching this one and I will see you in the next one.